First off, I was I was a very inquisitive child. Okay. I love trying different things. I like to know how things work. So um, I was into everything from you know different instruments to electronics. I once tried to take a little my uh, clock radio apart. It was a little small box clock radio. I tried to take it apart and hook up this big huge 12 inch subwoofer. I tried to get up to the, to the radio, the little clock radio, and like I burned my little brother's bed down. <laughs> that's who I am. You know, I always took things apart and tried to improve upon it and, and make things work. And that's that's how I was with music too. You know, um, early on my parents um, saw that I liked to sit down at the piano. Even though I didn't know what I was doing, they, they noticed like, like, oh, he's playing with dynamics at like two, three years old, you know, let's get them lessons. And then they would bring me instruments and they once brought me a harmonica and I had it for like two, three minutes. I was probably six, seven, eight years old. I had it for two, three minutes and started playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And they're like, oh, like maybe music is what it is. You know, but I mean, I just like to have, I, you know, I, I like trying different things, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, photography, art, uh, painting, you know, video, I, I, I mess with all of it, you know. Okay. I'm still a kid, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you play trumpet, piano? Give me an accordion and I'll make a song with it. I play a little bit of everything, certain instruments I'm not comfortable. I couldn't get up on stage and, and shred on an accordion, you know, but yeah. I, I know I can figure out, if I know the basics of, of how to make it work, then I can make music with it. You know? I didn't start off a singer. First and foremost, you I started off, see. yeah, I, I was rapping. Well, actually I was just, I was all about completing the song and Sometimes that meant, sometimes it meant rapping over a joint, you know, sometimes it meant singing, sometimes it meant uh, dropping like a, a, a poem over it, you know, whatever it took to, to complete a song. I was, I'm a, produ I'm a producer first, okay. you know, but whatever it takes to complete a song, that's what I do, that's what I did. I, um, the people started looking at me as a singer once I put out the Rise album, my, when my management got a hold of the Rise album, they, you know, were selling more of the vocal songs as opposed to the ones that had lyrics on them. Yeah. You know, so people took me as a singer and that's when I was like, okay, well, it looks like singing is gonna be the direction. Let me start doing more of that. Okay. Yeah. There were definitely struggles. Um, the struggle, the, the struggle never ends actually. You know, I mean, even though I consider myself comfortable now, there are still struggles to get to a next level, you know, but, um actually getting into the industry. I was working at a, at a place called Triple A. It's an insurance company. You know, I wore like a tie and everything to work every day, you know, and, and I did music on the side. You know, music was just something that I did. I wasn't necessarily looking to, um, to, to make it, you know, my, 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 my source of income. It's just what I love to do, you know, and it just so happened that I met the right people at the right time, you know, Batin and um, Dilla, and they introduced me to management and you know and it kind of just happened you know management came to me and they said you know we could probably shop this and make it happen and i was like oh well let's try it you know let's see if it works they tried it um it worked we got we i, I got signed and i let go of my job now this when the struggle part comes in All right, then. <laughs> yeah so i let go of my job um and that was in 2000 um, my album came out in 2003. Considering that it was a while ago, 2000, 2003, doesn't seem like a long time unless you're in it. You know, it's three years. Um, and I was signed with Virgin Records, which is a major record label. And they had all these restrictions. Everything you do has to come out through us. You can't do any side projects. Don't do anything unless we say go, unless we say move. So now I'm at home. I don't have anything to do from eight o'clock to four o'clock, except for music. So I'm sitting on all of this music and they're telling me, okay, your album's gonna come out, you know, this day, we got this, that, you know, this person, that person's doing marketing. Don't worry, this is your day. That day will come and go. We're gonna push it back, a la la, this, that, and the other. It was the runaround for a year. The year turned into two years, you know, so, 
Meanwhile, I'm not making money. I'm not doing shows because nobody knows my name. Um, I'm recording songs because I have a personal studio, but where's my income coming from for three years? You know, I'm kind of living off management, like on some, we get this money because it's coming back. We know it's coming back, don't worry about it, but that gets old. You lose your car, you know, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it was a struggle, it was a struggle. At one point in time, I tried to, um, I tried to create a, uh, an alias and I came up with the name Elude because I was eluding the label and I spelled it E-L-E-U-U-D, which is like my name backwards, D-W-E-L-E. Which was clever, I'm sorry, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, you know, Sun Village, you know, called me into the studio one day. We always work together, so it was just another day. Like, yeah, we come to the studio, we got a song we want to put you on. Like, all right, cool, I'll be there. Came in, and it was like, this joint, right here, check this out. You know what I'm saying? I cut the joint, tainted, and I remember leaving the studio, and the guy that ran the studio, this guy named R.J. Rice, he was like, Dwelle, man, that's what this I talk. Dwelle, man, that's a smash, man. You don't know what you just did, man. This is gonna go big. You gonna make some money, man. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And I left. Little did I know, you know what I'm saying, that the, that, that joint was gonna blow. That was their uh, breakout single. If it wasn't for that Tainted song, I don't know, I might still be under version trying to find a new alias, you know, to put my music on. I'm with uh, E1 Records right now, and I call them a major independent label. You know, but um, <clears throat> the major differences between being with a major label and being with the independent label is when you're with a major label, you have less creative control as an artist, but they put a lot of money behind your marketing. So everybody knows your album's coming out. You know, your, your face is everywhere, which is a plus. If you don't have a following, it's good to go with the Sometimes it's good. Back then, it was good to be with a major label. Um, being with the independent, you don't get that much money behind your promoting, you know, your project. But in the long run, you make more money, and you get your creative freedom. You can do what you want to do. In my situation, being a person that like writes my own music and and produces my own music, you know, an independent situation was best for me. It is best for me right now, being that I do kind of have a built-in following now, you know, but. Right now is a good time for, for the independent artist because you don't necessarily need a label to put out a quality video. You know, you can buy a 5D, a 7D and make it happen, you know, and get somebody that knows a little bit about Final Cut. And, you know, sometimes uh, simplicity is better also, you know, and, and, and it's about being original with your product. If you, if, you produce, if you produce a good original product and just keep, keep it simple and clean, you win. You know, you're winning. As a, as a new artist, I actually had a sweet deal. Like I got a, I got a lot of creative control on my first two albums that I put out with Virgin. Um, there were a few songs on that album that I was completely against. I'm not gonna say those songs, but yeah, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it because you know, but <laughs> but I mean, it happens to every artist. Considering that I was a new artist, I got a lot of creative freedom. It usually starts off with like a. A beatbox at the roads. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, awesome. yeah. I usually have a concept for, for like, for, for a song first, you know, of course. <clears throat> I mean, it can happen a lot of different ways, but usually that's mostly how it happens. So I sit down, I beatbox, and you know, play a few chords or yeah. whatever. And um, when I have time, I go back to it. I listen to that. I recreate it, recreate the beat mm. properly. The, uh, either the MPC, the machine, whatnot, you know. Yeah. Um, I like using um, live instruments, like especially when it comes to like bass lines and, and guitar, of course, horns. Yeah. Um, but once I get the music pretty much in the pocket, I listen to it and I kind of let the music direct what I talk about it and, and like and like the style of, yeah. of the lyric, yeah. you know. And I usually just ramble off a melody, not necessarily words, just kind of, I don't know, I could be speaking Actually, I have a YouTube channel. You do? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, I do everything. I have a, I have a cooking show called, <laughs> called, called Cooking Cooking with Chef Boyardway. <laughs> um, 
I uh, I shoot videos. I like post like B side videos to albums and to songs. Some songs that didn't come out, you know. Um, I have cameras that follow me around in my everyday life. It's pretty hilarious. Actually, before before I left, I had one of my managers, my boss at the time. You know, um, everybody knew I did music because I worked in in the, in the mail room of of, of, the, of the job. And they knew I did music, but um, my manager, when I told her that I was getting signed and that I could possibly be quitting, she pulled me to the side. She called me into into her office, and she said, "Do you like? Do you know what you're doing? Are you really just gonna give up your life just to pursue something that everybody's trying to do? Like it doesn't happen for everybody. Maybe one in a million people. And like, like, are you sure you want to do this?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm doing it." She was like. Hey, it's your life. And she kinda like made it like, like, bro, you're not gonna you're not gonna be anything. Nothing's gonna come to this. You might as well just stay here and work in the mail room. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, I was like, I gotta I gotta make it happen now, you know? Um so it's crazy. My birthday, my birthday week is when I got signed to Virgin and I also got a raise at the job. Like I moved from the from the mail room to like um a travel agent. You know, it was just like a whole nother department. So I did that for like a year before um, I was signed and I also worked in the travel department for a year before the travel became too extensive and I had to, had to quit the job. But that talk that I had with my manager is what really gave me that push. Like I gotta make it happen. But I definitely, within that three years, it was definitely like, man, I gotta go back and pay for my job back. I'm not looking forward to it. The future, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about about being in this industry, about about being in the, the industry of entertainment, is you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You can start off as a rapper and eventually be a singer. You know, I mean, it, it happens. Um, and in entertainment, a lot of things cross paths. You know, like right now, I could, I'm, I'm, I'm a singer, but I could maybe get into acting later. You know, or I could end up behind the scenes. You know producing, which I would not be mad at. I love the behind the scenes. That's where all the money is made anyway, you know, producing, right? So I have no problem with that. I never know. I'm just gonna ride it out. I'm riding it out. Okay. Love it, yeah. You know what, I thought about that. I thought about that um a couple weeks ago. Like, what do I want now? Because, of, yeah, yeah, we there, we there. It's like, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm in, a, I'm in a very comfortable position, you know, but I thought about that. Like, what do I? Make <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can I make myself uncomfortable? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, there's still people, you know, that that I would like to work with. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And I always said, I said this yesterday too during the Q and A. I said I always wanted to um, do a song with with, with Jay Z and with Ghostface <laughs> Killer. I think it def it definitely helps um, to 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 have your to have your music on a social platform, you know, be it YouTube or SoundCloud, and approach an artist with the card, with the CD. It helps, you know. Um, you just gotta. It's it's about catching them at the at the right time. You know, it's about catching the artist at the right time, man. Because I get. I get a lot of CDs every day, you know, and it's just a matter of like, I got a stack of CDs at the end of the tour. Sometimes me and my people, we get around and we go through them. And I'm not gonna lie, there's been situations where the CDs just sit there. Like it might be good, but I just haven't had a chance, you know, to to get to it. So it's, it, it comes down to chance, man, you know, with, with that situation, you know, but but some but sometimes if you can get, if you can, if you can get an email, hit them on, hit them on the Twitter, you know, saying Facebook and be like, yo, check this out. I check out more more stuff, you know, via Twitter and, and Facebook. Check out my, my situation, because it's easy, it's just a click. It's not a matter of searching for a CD and finding it and, you know, putting it in and riding to it. It's just a click, it's right there on my phone, I can check it out. I definitely, I definitely feel like it's needed. In my situation, I think it is. Um, the guy on stage is not necessarily me every day, you know. I kind of, yeah, I kind of have to create, like, another person. Cause me, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm, 
Yeah, I'm an introvert. You know, I like being at home. I like like if I go out to a to a club or something, I'd rather it be two or three people at the club and I can listen to the to the DJ and there's nobody at the bar. I can walk up and get a drink and just kick it. You know, that's me. But to be around like crowds, to be up here in front of you all and talk and not be nervous, I gotta, you know, be another person. I know it's all